Many of you have watched some of my videos. You may have seen me use this old uh, Simpson 260 uh, voltometer. Uh, probably the, the classic of the industry. Really great voltometer, really rugged. Uh, so I do, I do like using it when I'm tuning circuits to actually watch things uh, move. It's a lot easier to watch a needle move than it is uh, numbers on a multimeter. Um, so actually, just uh, the other day, I was at a ham fest and I picked up another one. I got it at a pretty good price and uh, found out why. Well, actually, physically, it's in really nice condition. It's been nicer than the one that I use. But found out that there's a problem with the meter movement. It, it isn't frozen. It does move, as you can see. But I found that uh, these movements are supposed to be uh, 50 microamps for a full-scale division. In fact, if you go to the 50 microamp scale, it's almost a direct connection between the 50 microamp input in here. And uh, this one takes about 75 microamps to reach full scale. And uh, taking a close look at it, it looks like someone's monkeyed around with the, uh, the movement, and it looks like it might have been overheated. So, unfortunately, the uh, movement's going to have to be replaced. So I thought I'd kind of just completely wasted my money, but it turns out that uh, one of my buddies, a uh, ham radio buddy of mine, has got a, uh, or had a, a 260 whose uh, meter is good, but the board itself is bad because battery corroded on it and things like that. Uh, so I'm going to, he, he donated that to me, so I'm going to use that as the donor for the, uh, for the meter movement. Now there was a number of different series of these 260s uh, and there was a difference in the meter movements between some of them but uh, the one that I use all the time is a series 5, this one is a series 3 and uh, there's a different uh, coil resistance for the, uh, the, the meter movement for some of them but it turns out as luck would have it uh, my friend uh, the unit he donated to me is also a series 3 so we'll be able to use that as, um, as the replacement. So, uh, let me show you what that looks like. Okay, this is uh, the donor 260. There's uh, the case half and the, the front meter face. I've already taken the meter out of this one, but I'll just you know, I wanted to show you the, the bits and pieces. See, the board is really corroded pretty bad. I might not be able to pick up well on camera. Uh, the, the pots have all kind of, you know, been corroded internally. So, I basically just you know, took, this, took the board out. The meter movement actually comes out by unscrewing... Uh, there's a, a nut and bolt that sit down in these little wells here and another uh, pair of nuts that are holding on a stud that connect up to the wires inside the meter movement and the meter movement goes in the back here. So I'll show you what that meter movement looks like. Okay, handling this uh, very gingerly here, this is the uh, replacement meter movement that came out of that, uh, that Series 3. I'm not sure if it will focus in on that. So these two little wires down here these are the little studs that go through where you connect up the wires. And then these studs down here at the bottom are the ones that go through the plastic housing to, uh, to bolt it back in again. So this, uh, this meter movement looks like it's good shape. I verified that um, it's 50, mi uh, 50 microamps full scale, so this should make a good replacement in this meter back here. So let's uh, take this one apart. So I'm going to do this in stages. It's nothing more boring than watching somebody just... Uh, unscrew screws. So the first part of taking it apart is to remove these four long screws from the four corners. You'll need a, like a cabinet screwdriver, something that is fairly narrow that can fit all the way down here because you got to go down about uh, an inch and a half or so, two inches to get to the screw head. So you undo those four screws and once you do that uh, you can basically lift the case off the back. So this is what the uh, it looks like assembled internally, and I'll kind of walk through what has to come apart. Um, so obviously I'll take all the batteries out. Uh, if we take a look here, these two connect are the connections to the electrical connections to the meter. Uh, so they'll come off. Underneath that, there'll be another set of uh, nuts that are holding the studs in the plastic housing. You can see through the holes here, you may be able to see there are two more uh, nuts in there, those are actually holding the movement itself into the housing, so they'll come off once we pull the board out of the way. Uh, and then there's two screws down here, uh, one here and one here. Those screws have to come out to move the board out of the way. And uh, on the front, there's uh, the only knob you've got to take off is the one for the zero ohms because that one will come through. These two knobs you don't have to come off. The, um, uh, the shafts actually stay 
as part of the case and just slip through the wafers on the switches. So, uh, so that's what I'll do to, uh, to take this apart. With the batteries out there is a little easier to see a couple of other screws that have to come out. I've already taken them out. You'll be able to see right here is a hole and right here those two and then down here a little bit tough to see there's another screw just behind where the battery contact is and then a, another one up here. Those four screws hold the front face on so with those out the kind of front shell will come off and you have access to the meter movement here. So I'm going to leave it uh, just kind of in place so that I don't uh, bang up the meter even though this one's going away uh, while I'm taking the, the board out of this one. Okay with the uh, two nuts off of the studs here and these two screws removed the board I'll actually lift out and uh, you can see it'll lift up here and it's still attached by some wires uh, one of the wires that really holds it mostly in place is this one going down to the battery contact and you should be able to slip that out of the housing and then the whole board can kind of fold away. So with the board, fold, board folded up out of the way we can see um, these remaining two nuts we've got to get out of the recesses and these two nuts that will take off for the electrical connections to the meter. Once we do that the meter will drop out and we'll be able to put the new one in place. Uh, some of the meters have got two small screws here and here on the front face um, and it's interesting both of these meters are series 3 the meter I'm taking the donor meter had little studs here and not screws this one actually has screws on the front face so don't forget about taking those out and uh, then the meter should come out okay now with those uh, small screws that taken out this whole meter face will now lift right out and the little studs right there that's what uh, where the wires would go in so uh, all we had to do is uh, reassemble and uh, calibrate. Okay, so let's see about putting the, uh, the donor meter uh, movement in here. So we've got to take these two little studs and uh, get them to sit in the little holes in the housing. And uh, there we go. With those things set in the housing, we'll carefully drop the movement into place here. Be careful not to touch the movement at all. And uh, here we go. So I'm going to reinstall those tiny little screws that are holding the meter face in place. And doing this on camera, you know, not a good idea. But we'll do this one. I'll take the camera off for the second one. go got it threaded right okay okay with the new replacement meter face in place uh, we're going to flip things over and uh, attach the uh, mounting studs for the movement so that's uh, kind of fixed and held in place so I'm just going to stick my finger over here away from the movement itself just to hold it in place and flip the meter over and we can knock the board out of the way here again. There we go. And uh, and now I'll, I'll drop these two uh, washers and nuts in place to hold the meter in place. Okay, I got these uh, two little nuts in place and it's uh, so rotating on the finger here just to kind of get them started. I also found that if you are sitting in a well, so if you stick a small screwdriver in there, you can kind of rotate it around that way to snug them up and uh, we'll tighten them up in a minute. So let's just snug these up this way once they get too deep for your finger to reach. Okay, and uh, I've got a really thin wall socket that I can use to put on there and snug them up. They don't have to be really tight, but we'll do that. Okay, with the donor meter in place and uh, mechanically tightened down, uh, next step is to put the star washers and nuts on the studs for the electrical connections. So we uh, put each of those on. And it's necessary to kind of pull up on these so that the uh, uh, underside of the stud catches in the recess inside the cavity uh, so uh, and that's how you can tighten this up there's a little hex shaped cavity inside so you have to kind of pull up on these as you're tightening them uh, until they go on and we'll snug those down so that's the first one and we'll do the second one All right with the electrical uh, studs tightened up 
uh, and the mechanical studs tightened up here. The next step we'll do is put in the four screws to attach the front bezel to cover up the, uh, the meter. It's a lot easier to put those in before we put the board in place. Okay, now's a good time to make sure you wipe out the inside of this very clear carefully. Any lint that's left in there is going to be sealed in there now. The other thing you need to make sure of is that the little pin that is on this the centering screw is lined up with the slot for the centering mechanism on the meter uh, so that uh, when you put the face down on top of the meter that that will mesh and uh, that will allow you to center the meter movement after you get everything reassembled. So uh, with that in place we'll flip the meter body over and put those four machine screws in that hold the bezel in place. You know, just uh, snug up these four machine screws in the corner that uh, hold the meter bezel in place. I want you again to make sure that uh, everything is lined up up front and that uh, everything was clean because you're kind of sealing in any <laughs> contaminants now into that uh, meter cavity. So once we do this, uh, the next step will be to uh, uh, fix the board back in place and uh, and button everything up and uh, we'll check the calibration. So uh, we're ready to go with that. So to put the board in place, um, you'll notice that the two shafts uh, here and here, these are for the uh, range selector and uh, the function switch over here. Um, those are attached to the body and they slip through the, uh, the little uh, wafers for the switches. So if we didn't move anything, it should all slip back in place. And now uh, this is the shaft here for the, auto, for the zero pot for the uh, ohms reading. So we should be able to slip everything back down in place here. Everything should line back up again. And uh, the studs should pop through here for the uh, electrical connections and we should be good to go. So it's a little bit snug here. I may have to go play with those connections a little bit. All right. So time out while we go do that. Okay, mystery solved. The uh, little battery clip for the uh, six volt string of batteries here was stuck under the board. So now that that's all clear, we should be able to uh, push this meter down in place, the board down in place here. Okay, so with that in place, we'll retain, replace those two studs, put the two screws in here, put the knobs back on it, and see how she looks. And this is that little uh, battery clip that uh, gave me a little trouble was stuck under the board. So we'll just uh, position that back in place in the slot and uh, just use a screwdriver to kind of jam it back down into the, uh, the little plastic housing here. Let's see, a little tougher to do on camera than it is in, without the camera here. I can't look at it straight. There we go. So that's in place. And we'll just kind of push that thing home. There we go. So now that's ready to go for, for that battery. Okay, as an initial check, uh, see I've got the meter in place here. It's sitting uh, right at full scale. You notice I've got the meter in the 50 microamp position, and I've got wires connected up to the 50 microamp terminal. Uh, I've got my Fluke uh, 87 multimeter here. I pull that over. Uh, you can see that that's, uh, get the light on there the right way, that's showing 50 microamps as well. So that, uh, at least verifying for me that um, the meter movement is in good shape, and it's working, and it's at 50 microamps. So we'll do uh, an initial check on this, see what the calibration looks like to see if I need to adjust it. All right, a uh, quick check at the cal. I've got a power supply here putting out uh, pretty darn close a millivolt away from uh, 2.5 volts as shown here on the, uh, the fluke. And if we look carefully at the meter here, it's just slightly over scale. So we'll just adjust uh, R27 here and bring that right in line. So let's see if I do that on camera here. All right, so just bring that ever so slightly down and there we go right spot on line right about there so that should get us online for all the DC volt ranges uh, it's just really one adjustment to uh, make the meter coil and that variable resistor exactly equal to 5k ohms according to the schematic and everything else is just set by resistors counting on the fact that uh, the meter coil and the external resistor is set to 5k. So that should check set that scale. 
In fact, if we adjust to the 10 volt scale here, uh, let's turn the uh, voltage up. And on the 10 volt scale, let's bring this up to 10 volts. And uh, there we're basically at 10 volts right there. And I'm uh, only about 1% high. That's certainly uh, well within spec what I'd expect for a meter of this age, so I'm not even going to worry about it. So we're good with that. Let's go to the 50 volt scale and uh, turn the voltage up here. This power supply doesn't go all the way up to 50, but let's bring it to about mid scale to 25 volts. And uh, that's right about there. And uh, yeah, not too bad, you know. I'm at uh, 25.1, 25.2. Again, about 1% off. So I think that's uh, pretty good for a meter that's probably as old as I am. All right, so there we have it. Uh, replaced the uh, meter movement in this uh, Simpson 260 Series 3. And this is back from about 1958-1959, uh, so actually the meter is a little older than me. Not too much. <laughs> but uh, after uh, uh, calibrating the DC scale, uh, I did a, vol a check on the AC scales on both the 2.5 volt and 250 volt scales. And, uh, and they were uh, very close, so I didn't bother adjusting them. So, uh, but that's, uh, that's it. So I uh, got a pretty good ham fest find for this old 260. Make another uh, good addition here for the bench. So uh, if you ever have a chance to pick up one of these, uh, really a great meter. And uh, uh, as you've seen in some of my videos before, and as I said when I, we first started this video, I like having analog meters around. Uh, if you're adjusting circuits and you're looking for voltages that move and change up and down slowly and you're trying to reach a target value, uh, or maybe you're working on radios and tuning the IFs and things like that. Uh, really nothing beats an analog meter movement uh, to watch and tune those things because uh, a DMM, even though the DMMs, a lot of them have got bar graphs and things like that, the thing will auto range on you and things like that and uh, they can be tough to follow. It's a lot easier to follow a nice analog meter movement. So uh, anyway, I uh, thought you uh, enjoy that and uh, thanks for watching. The comments are always welcome. Thank you.